Here's everything you might have missed in Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 5. Welcome back, Rick and Mort aficionados, to our weekly breakdown of Rick and Morty. This week's episode proves that fortune favors the bold, unless, of course, you eat the wrong cookie at Panda Express. With plenty of Easter eggs and pop culture references, there's a lot in the latest Rick and Morty that you might have missed. But to talk about it in detail, we have to spoil what happens in the latest episode. So if you're not up to date, leave now while you still can. <laughs> If you think I have this much patience for the zoo on Earth, you're sorely mistaken. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? The episode itself, Final Destination, is loosely modeled after the Final Destination films. They're a franchise of horror movies where the characters cheat death and the universe attempts to course correct by murdering them in increasingly gruesome ways. And if nothing else, they're the reason a generation of people will change lanes when driving behind a truck carrying logs. <laughs> The basic premise of this episode is that a Gwyneth Paltrow-esque girl boss is gaslighting and gatekeeping her way to success by using an enslaved alien creature to create fortune cookies that will actually come true for those who eat them. Unfortunately for Jerry, he winds up eating one of the cookies that's secretly a cry for help and is seemingly doomed to have sex with his own mother. You will have sex with your mother. This completes the triumvirate of incest-themed episodes between the giant incest baby in Season 5's Rick Dependence Spray, Beth on Beth action in Season 6's Bethic Twinstinct, and now Jerry and his mom. You sick f You guys enjoying this? Whether this is a company-wide strategy for Warner Brothers Discovery to put all their incest-themed content out on Sundays remains to be seen, but between this and House of the Dragon, they've got that market cornered, giant incest baby. Are you are you kidding me? Why? Why? <laughs> Discovery Channel! Discovery Channel, why? At the outset of this episode, Morty and Summer revealed they changed Rick's ringtone to the theme from Taxi. You know, Taxi, the beloved late 70s sitcom starring Danny DeVito, Tony Danza, Andy Kaufman, and a bunch of other folks, all working at a cab company in New York City? Yeah, that Taxi. Anyway, it's also the song that plays when Rick has a shootout with the secret meth ring that's operating out of the Panda Express. And speaking of that meth ring, this could be a reference to Breaking Bad and how Gustavo Fring ran his meth empire from behind the scenes of the Los Pollos Hermanos restaurant chain. Can I help you, sir? Throughout the episode, we see Rick use a number of cybernetic enhancements that have been teased throughout the season. From Dr. Octopus-esque arms to eat chow mein, to a lockpick built into his fingertips, to an extendable camera eye, Rick's a regular Inspector Gadget these days. He even has a Photoshop clone stamp tool that lets him and Jerry disguise themselves and blend into the wall. After dinner, Jerry can't stop thinking about his gross fortune. He tries to make himself throw up the fortune cookie, but he mentions that Sleepy Gary ruined his gag reflex. Oh, can't do it. Sleepy Gary ruined my gag reflex. Back in season two's Total Rickall, Sleepy Gary was one of the alien parasites that invaded the Smith house. This false memory pretended to be Beth's husband, but wound up having a romantic relationship with Jerry. And that was all in Jerry's head, which makes this all the weirder. And while Rick erased some of Jerry's memories of Sleepy Gary, back in Season 3's Morty's Mind Blowers, clearly he missed a few. When Morty sends Jerry a lewd Photoshop of his grandmother, we see a number of Easter eggs in his phone book. The contact list contains the Vindicator's resident intern, Noob Noob, Brent Knoll, a designer on the show, the show's most tragic character, Mr. Poopy Butthole, April is likely prop designer, April Erickson, Justin is most likely character designer, Justin K. Noel, and Wilder is character designer, Wilder Reese. When the Smith family heads off to the zoo, Jerry asks for photos of his favorite animal, the white tiger, to which Summer asks... Because they breed via incest? Is that true? In the late 1950s, the last wild white tigers were shot and killed. So to replenish the white tiger population, a small pool of white tigers in captivity were used to breed with each other. This led to inbreeding among white tigers at various zoos until their population stabilized. Moving on, Rick and Jerry eventually make their way to the aptly named Fortune 500 where these mysterious fortune cookies are made. This is named for the real life Fortune 500 list, a list of the 500 most profitable companies in America published by Fortune Magazine. In order to infiltrate this high-tech, highly secure facility, Rick invokes the Eye of Thundera, the gem on lion Sword of Omens, on Thundercats. Instead of Sight Beyond Sight, Rick summons Suits Beyond Suits! He then gives Jerry a Sailor Moon-inspired makeover, but instead of Moon Prism Power Makeup, Rick says Jerry Assistant Clothing Makeup. 
What the hell was that? Reusable Sailor Moon sequence. This joke also serves as a meta commentary on animation and how on shows like Sailor Moon and Thundercats, reusable sequences like this were designed to save money on animation. And then lo and behold, they reused the exact same sequence by the episode's end. I can just feel the savings. Fortune 500 is run by Jenneth Padrow Chunt, who's using the alien fortune cookies to make a twisted sci-fi version of Gwyneth Paltrow's goop. The alien in question basically eats chaos and shits out entropy, bending fate into a delightful fortune cookie shape. Fortune cookies are alien poop. This particular plot line reminded me a bit of the Futurama episode Fry and the Slurm Factory, when Fry learns exactly how his favorite soda, Slurm, is made, from anal secretions by the Wormulon Queen. Ah, lordy! <laughs> Fry? <sighs> Fry? Now here, because the alien eats chaos and alters probability, those who eat these cookies are bound to the fortunes contained therein. Although Rick brings a chain whip, a broken sword, an energy weapon, a broken bottle, a mystery crystal, and a voodoo doll to a gunfight, his cybernetic appendages are no match for fortune's whims. I'll be damned. Much more effective is when Rick discovers the loophole that having an unresolved fortune basically gives you immortality. Fuck. When Rick uses random fortunes as bullets, he winds up turning one guy into a teleprompter and another into the T-Rex Dinozord from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I am the son of God. Furious at Rick for foiling her plans and fulfilling her fortune, Jenneth eats a ton of cookies at once. She then morphs into a giant fleshy monster that mimics Tetsuo's transformation at the end of Akira. This is the second time we've seen an Akira homage like this on the show. Back in season four's Edge of Tamorty, Rick Die, Rick Pete, Morty went full Akira after being driven crazy by a crystal that showed him possible ways he could die. <laughs> The elderly caretaker of this fortune cookie monster seems to be based on Depth Gauge, the old guy in the oil tanker in Waterworld. Oh, thank God. He wants to free this monster so he can marry it, but later realizes that he's made a huge mistake. He invokes Margaret Howe, a naturalist who took part in a NASA-funded study in the 1960s to teach a dolphin named Peter to mimic human speech. Unfortunately, she got a little too close to her subject, to say the least. Getting cold feet. No. In order to avoid reenacting Oedipus Rex, Jerry turns the building into an Oedipus Rex when he creates an accidental black hole of sorts. Jerry's mother first appeared back in Anatomy Park in season one, where it was revealed that she and her husband are swingers. Here though, she seems blissfully unaware of what exactly was about to happen. Oh no! I'm so wet! <gasps> no! Anyway, folks, on that gross note, there you have it. That's everything you might've missed in the latest Rick and Morty. We'll be back next week with another breakdown, but in the meantime, tell us, what did you think of this episode? Did you spot anything that we missed? Oh, sticks to walls guy. I, I, I guess we were both wrong. Oh, God. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.